India is currently evaluating the acquisition of Russia's Su-57 fifth-generation stealth fighter jet, a move that could significantly influence the Indian Air Force's IAF modernization efforts. This consideration arises amidst India's ongoing pursuit of advanced fighter capabilities to address regional security challenges and technological advancements. Russia has proposed a comprehensive package to India, which includes not only the sale of Su-57 aircraft, but also the establishment of domestic production facilities through a full transfer of technology. This arrangement would enable India to manufacture the Su-57 locally, potentially at existing facilities like HAL's Nasik plant, where Su-30 MKI jets are currently assembled. Such a move aligns with India's Make in India initiative and aims to reduce dependency on foreign suppliers. The Su-57, known for its stealth features, advanced avionics and super maneuverability, presents a significant upgrade over India's current fleet. However, it's important to note that the Su-57 is still relatively new, with limited operational history and a small number of units in active service. This raises questions about its combat readiness and the maturity of its technology. In contrast, India has already integrated the French-made Dassault Rafale into its air force, with 36 units delivered and operational. The Rafale is a 4.5-generation fighter known for its versatility, reliability, and proven combat performance. While it lacks the full stealth capabilities of the Su-57, the Rafale's track record and existing infrastructure support make it a dependable choice for the IAF. Cost is another critical factor in this decision. The Su-57 is estimated to cost between $35 million and $40 million per unit for export versions which is significantly lower than the Rafale's price tag of approximately $91 million per unit. However, the total cost of ownership, including maintenance, training, and infrastructure, must also be considered. India's requirement for advanced fighters is substantial, aiming to reach a strength of 42 combat squadrons by 2035. Currently, the IAF operates around 31 squadrons, indicating a shortfall that needs to be addressed through acquisitions and indigenous development. The Su-57 could play a role in filling this gap, especially if produced domestically, but it would need to complement other platforms like the Rafale and the upcoming Indigenous Advanced Medium Combat Aircraft, AMCA. Russia's willingness to offer full TOT for the Su-57 is partly driven by its desire to strengthen defense ties with India and to secure a significant export customer for its fifth-generation fighter. This partnership could provide Russia with financial benefits and bolster its position in the global defense market. In conclusion, India's decision to acquire the Su-57 involves weighing the benefits of advanced technology and potential self-reliance against the risks associated with an unproven platform. The choice between expanding the Rafale fleet, investing in the Su-57, or focusing on indigenous projects like the AMCA will shape the future capabilities of the Indian Air Force.